Welcome to my five minute lightning talk, the four R's for virtual workshop, part of Carpentry Con 2022. My name is Jennifer, my pronouns are she, hers. I'm Bradley University's Instruction and Outreach Librarian here in Peoria, Illinois, USA. My photo is of a white female with graying hair and a bow tie and vest. My button reads, please interrupt me. Credit to Edward S. Duell of NYU Shanghai. My agenda allows for one minute per point. Those are real estate, road signs, repetition, and respect. First, real estate. While you may be proficient in tabbing through multiple program windows or desktops, resizing windows, or navigating a virtual computer lab environment, our learners rarely are. Please make time early in the workshop to scaffold a few exercises. This includes switching between the Zoom meeting and the browser and the software window itself. Next, I use a screenshot from Carpentry's blog suggesting a layout of a typical 15 inch laptop. I'll display it during break time because Zoom's full screen function jumbles my carefully arranged presets. Last, if your host offers a virtual computer lab, many assumptions break. Learners may need time to recreate the screen layout inside the virtual desktop and switching between programs may require additional guidance from the host's IT. Second, road signs. Learners are rarely watching your screen. Without highlight cursor in Zoom, it may be very difficult to locate your pointer, especially looking between multiple windows or monitors. My preference is to describe where I am on the screen, left, right, top, bottom, and lead with shapes over colors. You may be lucky enough to see the color first, but if most of the screen is shades of gray, looking for a quarter of the screen, then a shape in that area will have lower frustration. Next, consider what has changed between the initial version of a Windows layout and buttons or menus that only appear after some actions, especially if those shapes are the same name between submenus. Again, lead with where to focus and a shape to find to minimize frustration. Last, pause. Grow comfortable with silence between sentences, between steps. Silence in 15 second increments is not going to damage you. It may even provide learners the time and space they need to form a question, open the chat window, find the raise hand button to ask. Third, repetition. Providing time for repetition means you will provide less content. Your learners will receive more confidence. Repetition facilitates pacing. Start slow, it doesn't require rushing at the end. Pacing supports learners who don't know when to ask. When can repetition happen? In a virtual setting, I guide the workshop to watch my screen as I describe the layout in the first exercise. Then I encourage the learners to switch to their live local client while I repeat the same location and shape directions but offer the next exercise. Then the third repetition happens as I release the remaining exercise. Carpentry lesson challenges often come in multiple parts so again, in a virtual environment, I can lead the first in my screen share, then vocally guide the learners in the second part and release everyone to try in the remainder. Finally, respect. This is a moment to acknowledge your privilege and access and what you need to let go to build empathy. The privilege may be in living somewhere where you can access the internet faster than DSL, afford a larger screen, or even an additional device. Break time is needed within instruction, between episodes, between sessions. It's not just a reward for fast learners. In fact, it's more important for the learners who worked with a helper through a designated break time. Comfort comes with time spent. Some learners will never interact with devices like you. I choose to single task and focus on one app at a time by turning off notifications and closing other windows. For me, it's a privilege for some of my neurodiverse friends, it's a necessity due to flashing or distractibility. If you are comfortable as an instructor, invite students to interact with you as they can, chat, video, or voice, but take the more inclusive step of meeting them where they are, typing instead of speaking, watching and taking notes to ask later, cameras off. Respect is slowly earned and quickly lost. Make the time to model the best practices for inclusion. Finally, in review, I presented four slides on managing the visual real estate of a virtual workshop, providing visual and vocal road signs to support multiple modalities in learning, using repetition to enhance a lesson and pace yourself, 
and where to connect with less well-known opportunities for respect. Thank you for your time today. I collected five blog entries for additional examples. Their links are in the description.